how to move to us from canada this is a question that has been in the minds of we immigrants for a long time but especially during these tough times in canada this question is getting much more popular so in this video we'll try to answer this question it's not about going to us for luxury or for travel it's about moving to us to work and settle there what are the different and most popular options whether you're looking for a new job in us or you're looking for an intercompany transfer to the us office of the same organization or maybe you're an entrepreneur to start a small business in this video we'll talk about the best visas to move from canada to us for all these three different categories okay guys before we proceed in this video please notice that here i've made one assumption that you have canadian citizenship if you are a permanent resident and not a citizen i would suggest you to actually go for your citizenship and then think of moving and settling to us because your life would be much more easier if you have the canadian passport canada and us have signed nafta treaty which is north american free trade agreement which gives special privileges to canadian citizens to go and work in us but this does not mean that you don't need a visa you certainly need a visa to work in us and that is what we're going to discuss in this video i'm sure most of you would already be aware about the h1b visa so we won't talk in length about the h1b visa but rather we'll make a stark comparison between the visas that we're going to discuss in this video and the h1b visa whether you have indian or canadian citizenship you can actually go for h1b visas but there would be advantages and disadvantages as well that we'll discuss in this video okay so let's start with those people who want to find a new job in us in my opinion the best option is the tn visa so let's talk about the overview the eligibility criteria and also its comparison with the h1b visa okay so let's start with the overview of the tn visa it is also known as the trade nafta visa which is basically a non-immigrant visa and it allows the canadian citizens who work in specific occupations to work in united states now we'll talk about those specific occupations and it's a wide variety of occupations we'll talk about it in the next section of the video you can think of tn visa as a employer specific closed work permit so if you decide to change your us employer then you would need to get a new tn visa because the visa is actually tied to your employer the validity of the visa is three years but it can be renewed indefinitely as long as you continue to meet the eligibility requirements again we'll talk about that in the next section the process to apply is very easy you can apply it directly at a us port of entry when entering the us or you can have your employer submit the tn application along with the form to uscis and then seek entry once approved at a us port of entry the process is very simple you can literally go to a us border and you can get the visa within an hour it's that simple okay now let's talk about the eligibility criteria so first and foremost you need to have a proof of your canadian citizenship of course your passport would work then the most crucial part the job offer letter you should have a pre-arranged full-time or part-time job offer letter with a us employer now after that you do need to prove that you do have the required qualifications to work for that job offer which means that let's say you are applying for a software engineer so you should have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree to prove that you're qualified enough to apply for that job then lastly your job should fall under the list of 60 nafta professions now it's a huge list and i'm sure that most of my viewers would be working for one of those professions let's quickly see if we talk of the nafta occupations list then it's actually a huge list because we do have accountants architects computer system analysts then we have engineers lawyers uh, librarians urban planners if we go to the scientist section then we have biologist chemist uh, geologist uh, zoologist of course the big list of medical professionals as well and teachers are also included i'm not going through each and every one of them 
you can pause the video and have a look if your occupation is actually one of them. Okay, so now let's talk about the comparison between the TN visa and the famous H-1B visa. First of all, with the TN visa, there's no limit or lottery system, which is a big advantage. If we talk about the H-1B visa, then of course, you know that there is an annual quota of around 65,000 and a lottery system as well. If we talk about the processing times, it is much quicker for TN visa because you literally have to go to the US border and get it approved in maybe less than an hour. While for H1B, it is a complicated process and it takes longer as well. If we talk of the TN visa, then the biggest disadvantage is that it has a restriction of being employer specific. We talked about it earlier. While if you're an H1B visa, there's no such restriction, which means you can actually switch jobs whenever you want. So this is a big advantage when it comes to the H-1B visa. Now, as discussed earlier, TN visa can only be issued to certain occupations. However, it's a wide range, so I don't completely mark it as a disadvantage, but it's certainly an advantage when it comes to the H-1B visa because they have broader occupational eligibility. Okay guys, so now for all of those people, who are not actually willing to switch their organization or looking for a new job. Maybe you're working in a multinational company and you're looking for an inter-company transfer. In that case, your best bet would be the L1 visa. Let's discuss about this visa in detail. Okay, so please allow me to give you a brief overview of the L1 visa. So as I told you, this is an inter-company transfer visa, which means that Let's say you are working for an organization in Canada and the same organization has offices in US or maybe it's trying to set up a new office. In that case, you can actually apply for this L1 visa. However, you must have worked for at least one year for that organization in the last three years before applying for this visa. Now, L1 visa is of two different types, L1A and L1B. Let's talk about the L1A first. This type of visa is given to associates who are working in executives or managerial positions. So for example, you might be managing a department or a function of a business. Maybe you might be creating or implementing policies and procedures. Maybe you're a key decision maker. Maybe you are the one who's responsible for new hirings, or maybe you have control over daily operations. These are just some of the examples which might determine that you are working as an executive or a manager. The validity for L1A is seven years and then it can be extended as well. Now talking about L1B, this is given to associates who have specialized knowledge based on product services, research and development activities, or maybe intellectual property. Or maybe you have advanced or unique knowledge of the organization's processes and procedures but you're not working as an executive or a manager. The validity for L1B is five years. Because this is an intercompany transfer visa, you need to be working for the same organization. You cannot switch your organization until you change your visa. Just like we discussed in TN versus H1B, you cannot switch organizations when you have L1 visa as well, but you can do that while you have an H1B visa. Okay, now when we have talked about the jobs, let's talk about all those people who are self-employed. Maybe you want to start a new business in US. Maybe you want to buy an existing one. So which visa is the best one to do that? That is the E2 visa. Now there are different categories, E1, E2 and E3 visas. Let's talk in detail about the E2 visa and why is it the best visa if you're looking to start a small business in US. Okay, as I told you, E2 visa is the visa for investors or entrepreneurs or businessmen. So of course, here we have to talk about investment. You need to invest a certain amount of money in order to be eligible for this E2 visa. Now you can start a new business or maybe you can buy an existing business or a controlling share in an existing business, something of that sorts, but you do need to invest a substantial amount. Now the rules do not define any amount. So it's not like you have to invest $50,000 or $500,000. They say that no set dollar figure constitutes a minimum amount of investment to be considered substantial for E2 visa. Instead, 
A proportionality test is used to determine whether an investment is substantial or not. Now, if you want me to make a detailed video on this, we can get into details and I can make a detailed video to make you understand better about this proportionality test and what amount, small or big, could be considered a substantial investment. I've seen many articles and many videos on this and the range of investment that comes out is between 50,000 to 150,000. Some people have got the E2 visa with only $50,000 investment. But to be on the safer side, it is recommended that you have around $100,000 invested in a US business. And of course, there are certain other conditions which you can follow to make sure that you have a substantial amount invested in that business. So now when we have talked about the investment, let's talk about the validity. The validity is for three months to five years. Even if your E2 visa is valid for five years, this does not mean that you can stay in US for five years at a single time. Your status determines how long you can stay in US at one time. So even if you have a five year visa, you're generally granted two years of status each time you enter the US. You can exit and re-enter the US to get an additional two years of status. As far as renewal is concerned, there's no limit. So it could be renewed n number of times. As I told you, there are other E-category visas as well. E-1 visa is for traders and E-3 visa is only for Australian nationals. So that makes E-2 visa much more attractive for Canadian citizens who are neither traders but actually want to invest certain amount of money into a US business. Okay, so we have talked about the TN visa, the L1 visa and the E2 visa. If you want me to talk about any other US visas, then please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you feel that I've missed any point, then please highlight that in the comment section. You can let me know if you want me to make any video on any particular topic, a detailed video. Though if you like this video and want me to make more content of this type, then please click the thumbs up button and share it with your friends and family. And also, you know the drill. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please click the subscribe button as well. Thanks a lot for watching this video.